In 1956, IBM launched its supercomputer, IBM 305 Ramac. It was the first computer with a hard drive and weighed over a ton. This hard drive, the one being lifted into a freaking plane using a freaking forklift, could only hold 3.75 megabytes by today's standards. This 3.75 megabyte hard drive was leased to companies for $3,200 per month. And in today's money, it would be over $30,000. To put that in context, 60 years later, smartphones minimum standard storage is 64 GB and that's about 17,000 times as big and weighs around 200 grams. It took 51 years before hard disk drives reached the size of 1 terabyte, and this happened in 2007. And in 2009, the first hard drive with 2 terabytes of storage arrived. So while it took 51 years to reach the first terabyte, it took just two years to reach the second. Fast forward 10 years, in 2019, the largest commercially available HDD can store at least 15 terabytes of data. The world of SSD offers even more space of at least 100 terabytes. The reason why electronics have increasingly become much smaller, more powerful, and cheaper is because of the observation called the Moore's Law. Mobile apps, video games, spreadsheets, electronics, and accurate weather forecasts, that's just a sampling of the life-changing things made possible by the reliable exponential growth in the power of the computer chips over the past five decades. The continual cramming of more silicon transistors onto chips known as Moore's Law has been the feedstock of exuberant innovation in computing. In 1965, co-founder of Intel, Gordon Moore, postulated that the number of transistors that can be packed into a given unit of space will double every two years. So Moore's law is not a physical or natural law, but a rather a surprisingly accurate prediction. It's Gordon Moore's perception that transistors were shrinking so fast that every year twice as many could fit onto a chip, though the cost of computers and electronics are halved. Moore's law states that we can expect the speed and capability of our computers to increase every couple of years and we will pay less for them. Another tenet of Moore's law asserts that this growth is exponential. This law has been a rule of thumb and sort of Grand Prix competition tournament for electronic companies for 60 years now. Those tiny shrieking transistors are the reason why you are watching this video from your mobile phone or computer that is thousands of times stronger than a processor that sent humans to the moon. Transistors are one of the biggest reasons why the whole technology has been advanced at an exponential rate. What are those transistors anyway? Well, for example, your brain contains around 100 billion cells called neurons, the tiny switches that let you think, store memories, and remember things. Computers contain billions of miniature brain cells as well, and they are called transistors. And they are made from silicon, a chemical element commonly found in sand. A transistor is really simple and really complex. Generally, a transistor can be used in two ways. It can work either as an amplifier or a switch. Today in electronics, transistors used as a switch. A tiny electric current flowing through one part of a transistor can make a much bigger current flow through another part of it. In other words, the small current switches on the larger one. This is essentially how all computer chips work. For example, a memory chip contains hundreds of millions or even billions of transistors. And for example, the newest iPhone 11 Pro has a 13 Bionic chip, which is classified as a 7 nanometer node processor, and it contains 8.5 billion transistors inside each of which can be switched on and off individually. In electronics, it's all about using electrons to control electricity. Well, an electron is a small negatively charged particle of the atom. The most advanced transistors work by controlling the movements of individual electrons, so you can imagine just how small they are. And when it works as an amplifier, it takes a tiny electric current at one end and produces a much bigger electric current at the other. In other words, it's kind of a current booster. That comes in really useful things like hearing aids, one of the first things people use transistors for. A hearing aid has a tiny microphone in it that picks sounds from the world around and turns them into fluctuating electric currents. These are fed into a transistor that boosts them and powers a tiny loudspeaker, so a person who has a hearing disability can hear a much louder version of the sounds around. A lot of people are not aware about how these little transistors are basically a single invention that changed the world upside down. More importantly, Moore's law has been a very critical part of this whole process. To put that into perspective, one of the first semiconductor processes in 1971 was 10 micrometer. 
In 2001, it was 130 nanometer, or nearly 80 times smaller than it was in 1971. And in 2017, the smallest transistor process was 10 nanometer. Well, the diameter of a human hair is 10 micrometers, or nearly 10,000 times larger than how small transistors are today. You may have heard people speculating, in 50 years, our technology will keep pushing at the same rate as it was from 1950 to 2019. And from now on, in 50 years, it will look completely different, as if Moore's law keeps static. But there is a physical limitation for a transistor as it's nearing to the size of an element. In 2015, Gordon Moore himself said Moore's law will die in the next decade or so. Why this technological exponential growth is dying? Well, the first problem is quantum tunneling. As we reduce the size of a transistor, the size of its depletion layer also decreases. The depletion layer is important as it is what stops the flow of electrons. Researchers have calculated that a transistor smaller than 5 nanometer will not be able to stop the flow of electrons due to tunneling. The electrons will not perceive the depletion region and it will tunnel through as if it did not exist. And a transistor that cannot stop the flow of electrons is pretty useless. Moreover, we are now slowly approaching the size of an atom itself, and you cannot build a transistor smaller than an atom. The silicon atom has a diameter of around 1 nanometer, and right now we are manufacturing transistors with gates at about 10 times that size. In a few years, not taking into account quantum effects, we will not be able to go any smaller considering that we are reaching the physical limit of how small something can be. What is the most problematic of all is the thermal effects caused by the small size transistors. As we go smaller, transistors tend to get more leaky, meaning that even in their off state, they let some current pass through. This is called the leakage current. If we take the leakage current to be 100 nanoamperes and a CPU to have 100 million transistors, then the leakage current will be 10 amperes. That's enough to drain your phone battery in a couple of minutes. A higher gate voltage can reduce the amount of leakage current, but that causes more heating effects, compromising the integrity of the whole chip. Regardless, Moore's law is still alive, and right now, the smallest process node is 7 nanometer from Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. But Samsung has announced to start to work on process nodes all the way down to 3 nanometer. And just recently, TSMC is approved to build the world's first 3 nanometer plant. As transistors are getting to atomistic sizes, we are in the twilight moment of Moore's law. It's inevitable that it will end though, but it can be stretched with better materials like gallium, nitrite, and graphene that have been shown to have lesser losses at faster switching frequencies, but not for a long time. For the past 10 years, some companies have been declaring that Moore's law had already finished. There is a potential competitive advantage to disingenuously pronouncing the end of this law. For example, generate the smoke of Moore's law is dead and competitors may give up. And then when your advance comes out, to everyone's surprise, you can dominate the market as you are having first mover advantage. Moore's law is still alive, but eventually it will die. So that will be the end of an exponential growth era that we have been seeing for the past 55 years. If that era has reached its peak, interestingly, what comes after? Today, we use computers to write documents, watch videos, play games, and do many things all on the same device using the same chip architecture. We are able to do this because the chips in our computers are designed to be a general purpose technology. That makes computers convenient and useful, but is terribly inefficient for computationally intensive tasks. The perfect example of this is the GPU. GPUs have become popular for graphics and artificial intelligence, as it is built for a singular purpose. As for artificial intelligence, companies like Google and Microsoft have begun designing chips that are specifically engineered to run their own deep learning tools. This greatly improves performance, but you need to make a lot of chips to make the economics work so it's not practical for most tasks. Frankly, these strategies are merely stopgaps. They will help us in the specific field over the next decade or so, but with more slow ending, the real challenge is to come up with fundamentally new ideas for computing. If the transistors are shrinking to atomic sizes, and if we want to continue, then we have to leap into the quantum realm. 
Quantum computers have the potential to be thousands if not millions of times more powerful than current technology. Both IBM and Google have built working prototypes and Intel, Microsoft and others have active development programs. Quantum computing is one option from several. The second major approach is neuromorphic computing or chips based on the design of the human brain. These excel at pattern recognition tasks that conventional chips have trouble with. Elon Musk's Neuralink company is doing something close to this as they are morphing 8mm computer chip into a 100 billion neuron containing human brain, so a person can control their smartphone and computer with their thoughts, and that's just the beginning. Yet both of these have their drawbacks. Quantum computers need to be cooled down to close to absolute zero, which limits their use. Both require profoundly different logic than conventional computers. The transition from transistors to the next level will not be seamless. Whether it's a new configurations of machines, chips made out of entirely new materials, or new types of subatomic research that open up new ways of packing transistors onto chips, I personally believe that future of computing with all ingenuity it involves it will just be fine. Well, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. There are some videos on the production right now, but my hardware is slowing me down a bit as it does not have enough transistors inside its processor as it should be. If you don't mind, please support channel on Patreon. It will help to increase the quality in the videos and I will be able to release videos more often. Please subscribe if you haven't and hit the like button if you liked the video.